Uh, hi, my name is Pavel Prokopyev and I'm the head for development for Association of Laboratories of Development of Artificial Intelligence in Russia. Okay, so first of all, can you tell me the, how Russia has developed over time with artificial intelligence and how have you been able to adopt with artificial intelligence? Uh, today, we're some of the leaders of, in artificial intelligence in the world. Um, it develops in all kinds of, in, of spheres, uh, medicine, culture, uh, politics, all kinds of things. Um, me personally, I do a lot of artificial intelligence in medicine. We have taught a uh, neural network how to read pathologies of lungs and now we are able to conduct quick studies that used to take 30 minutes before to a doctor doing it by hand. Now with our neural network, it, it does it in 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. So we save 30 minutes to doctor. Uh, so he can spend more time with his patients. A lot of people are scared of artificial intelligence. We tell them artificial, artificial intelligence is not able to, uh, to, to do things without a human. You will always need a doctor. It is just a tool in the hands of doctor. It's a tool that saves him a lot of time mm -hmm. on some technical work, which he instead can do, uh, can devote to curing and treating his patients. Mm -hmm. And that's what, why we think this is a good idea. Another sphere in which you can use a lot of artificial intelligence is finances. We also work a lot with banks. We help them um, work with large language models. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one of the fastest developing tracks in, in artificial intelligence and in ar artificial intelligence in financial sector as well. Uh, we have developed an app, uh, which is a crypto fiat app, uh, where you unite both of uh, financial worlds, the new breakthroughs and the old fashioned banking ways. Uh, anything you look at, uh, I, have a, I have a friend of mine, he's an artist, he, he paints beautiful pictures. Uh, so he has taught neural network uh, to paint in his style. So today, uh, neural network and robotic arm starts uh, making a picture, starts making a drawing for him, and then he finishes it. So uh, when I think about it, I also think about his ability to now continue creating forever because once he's no longer in, his, in this world the neural network that creates in his style will still be able to continue uh, to continue creating there are a lot of ethical questions that we need to answer when we think about artificial intelligence however we always try to find uh, the answer that artificial intelligence is not a threat this is a, our help Okay, so um, back to what we have today on artificial intelligence and entertainment, a threat or benefit to culture. So, so far, how has the entertainment industry in Russia grown over time with the adoption of artificial intelligence? And what have you people implemented in artificial intelligence with the aspect of film production in Russia? Um, as you know, today the West uh, has stopped uh, has stopped releasing movies in Russia. Yeah. So all of the movies that we have going on, uh, these are Russian movies. And we use a lot of artificial intelligence in our movies today, because we have some blockbusters, which, uh, which have graphics of the same quality as Hollywood movies. However, all of that is Russian technologies. These are Russian uh, computer scientists uh, working with Russian cinema producers. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the ways uh, that it works in the culture today. So I read something online where Mr. Bidas, the Prime Minister of Russia, said that artificial intelligence in Russia is just about 20% and it's looking to get to 50% by 2024. I, since you are a body under the artificial intelligence, is what do you think will be made possible to actually, actually get to that percent? Uh, well, uh, uh, the government of Russia understands the importance of implementing artificial intelligence okay. because unlike human beings, you can always rely on artificial intelligence in many ways. Artificial yeah. intelligence doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't get said and makes mistakes. It doesn't make mistakes. Uh, so what needs to be done? Really, we need to find a way for the public to stop being scared of artificial intelligence because mm -hmm. a lot of people see a threat in it. Uh, this is our mission for people to understand that there is no threat 
threat, it's only help. Uh, what could be done? Uh, there is a lot that could be done in uh, legislature. Right yeah. now, our progress is moving faster than legislature. Uh, now this is the first track where I see the development. Uh, the second track is uh, general opinion, better general opinion towards artificial intelligence. And the third track is uh, development and making sure that our people stay in our country and continue working on our artificial intelligence from our country because we have some of the brightest minds in the world today working at artificial intelligence in Russia. Basically, anything you're looking for in, in terms of our artificial intelligence, uh, we either have specialists that are able to perform or we have specialists that would be able to find a solution which would be needed for your particular needs, whichever they be. Okay, so lastly, so I know Russia is very much developed than Africa. So what exactly lessons do you think Africa can learn from Russia in the aspect of artificial intelligence? I think that a lot could be done in medicine uh, uh, because some of the problems that uh, Africa has, uh, Russia has too. Yeah. Sometimes in remote regions, we don't have enough doctors. Yes. So our product, our artificial intelligence helps solve partly helps partly solve this problem by making sure that doctors spend less time on technical work and have more time to treat patients. So where I really see huge development opportunities, that would be medical AI in Africa. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Thank and you. I appreciate it.